So, so uh, I feel better. Uh, however, I'm still a bit shaky. Okay. So uh, today I'll uh, give kind of a short talk. Okay, like one hour. Mm -hmm. So since uh, today more people came, let me briefly remind what happened last time okay in this course so so somehow i proposed to consider the new category okay and uh, so think about gauge uh, theories, sigma models, gauge theories in different dimensions, sigma models in different dimensions, and uh, computations that people do there. I propose uh, the following uh, category. So consider stack V over G, okay? So the main idea is to consider not only this stack, but possibly this stack together with the differential D1 that is acting here. This would be considered as a model of the space. Now, consider another object of the same type. The main thing in category is not the notion of the space itself or manifold. The main uh, thing is to consider the morphism. <clears throat> so we actually Consider polynomial maps. Between V1 and V2. And it is clear that the group act on these maps. So and the However, right side right side is not visible, right side of the board. Sorry. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. So we consider not only polynomial maps. So G2 and G1 are acting on this space of maps. Okay? So we would like to consider quotient. With respect to G1 and G2. Now, what is interesting is that uh, is that in order to consider quotient, we need to have a moment map for stability.
And this is additional data. Moreover, since D1 is acting on V1 and D2 is acting on V2, we have DG category. Now, we have G external acting here, commuting with G2. G2 external. <coughs> and also we have G1 external. So what we can uh, get out of this, we can get the the space of maps. With the action. of D2 minus D1 adjoint. And proposal is to study this category as it is. So object is not a space. Object is, a, is an algorithm to compute morphism. Now, I just want to say that this category is a generalization of homological algebra category. In homological algebra category, everything is the same. However, here we have not polynomial maps, but linear maps. So would we have this? We would have uh, so-called abstract homological algebra. And here we have polynomial maps. So maybe, <clears throat> maybe we can even embed this thing inside the, uh, that's what I have not mentioned last time. Maybe we could even embed this inside homological algebra. And this could be done as follows. We replace V1 by symmetric product of V1. So linear maps from symmetric, and of course it's clear how to put differential here and uh, how to put action of the group here. So would we do this? It would be exactly, okay, so I missed it last time. Exactly subcategory of homological algebra category. So uh, you may call this constructible manifolds or whatever. 
What is interesting is that uh, in this way, everything is embedded inside. That's, that's what I have not mentioned last time. Everything is embedded in the homological algebra category. And this is uh, what we study in different examples. Exactly this. So, uh, so-called tricks that we use, like localizations, uh, equivalent things, should be nothing but uh, piece, uh, pieces of homological algebra, very particular pieces. And uh, I also mentioned that, uh, that there should be a universal function. And universal function should be equivariant volume of space of morphisms. And from this description, it is basically clear that it is a category. So, when people studied such object before, they somehow forgot that there is the first argument. They said, ah, here we have some kind of the space. And here we have sigma model, gauge linear sigma model, or just uh, gauge theory. So symmetry between the target and the source was not uh, properly observed and studied. And, uh, and uh, I actually think that if we consider uh, everything in proper generality, we could uh, understand a lot about uh, the structure. Because we can have composition, so it's very important. So if here is a point, this is the manifold itself. So we are coming uh, exactly to the notion of uh, X point in algebraic geometry. If you have X point in Y, it's just the map X inside Y. So it's uh, not reasonable to say that uh, here we have a collection of points or or we points or whatever. It is just a category, okay? Now. So, uh, it, so for equivalent volumes, is it okay for non-abelian groups G1 and G2? Yes. Mm -hmm. you want uh, you, I, you mean this yes it's yes. okay mm -hmm. yes it's okay and uh, maybe later on we will study this mm -hmm. so uh, my main uh, message is uh, that we somehow forgot the left hand side the source uh, the sources of the same type now, there is an interesting phenomena here. And phenomena here is that somehow, so Sorry. 
So, 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 the, so uh, last time we made an observation, and this observation was called, in terms of physics, the statement that uh, string field theory that space of maps from x1 to x2 in this particular case is string field theory. I put the quotient marks. So what does it mean? It means the space of maps from x1 to x2 is somehow isomorphic to maps of some curves or something to x1. So we observe it in several examples. Okay, so let me let me call it string field theory conjecture. So how how it went? So what, so when x two was toric, then and we have a morphism, then pre-image of compactification divisor was the image of some scheme in x one. We observe it when x one was one dimensional. We saw we see it when x one is two dimensional, and uh, Conjecturally, it is uh, true in other cases. So what, so what does this mean? How could it be that morphism from x1 to x2 is isomorphic, is isomorphic to morphism from c to x1? This is a strange. Contravariant functor. So now there is no physics anymore. Here we are studying pure mathematics. So physics was just kind of motivation to make this to make this setting. You see, here x is a source, x1, and here x1 is a target. So proposal, study this function. And maybe identify this functor with uh, some known functor. So in homological algebra, uh, such functor uh, is called uh, duality. There should be some uh, natural pairing or something. So actually, it takes V into V star. And the level of linear things, it is something like this. Interesting. So, uh, so one of the plan was uh, to study this functor and to study equivalent volumes. I may even propose something. So, <clears throat> another proposal. 
we have a max from S star of V1. So if we multiply it by maps like this, shifted by one, we can use Kazul duality. I don't know, would it help? Maybe I missed a star here. I am not sure. So uh, maybe not. So uh, so it may help because uh, you see here we have to sum over degrees of polynomial. So we are summing over degrees of the power here. So we will get generating functions or something like this when we sum up degrees. So Kazul duality, Kazul, actually means that uh, this complicated generating function from symmetric power could be replaced by by this simple for for, uh, for shifted. Hmm. Okay, but, but this was a side remark. Okay, so this was a side remark. By the way, Pasha, mm -hmm. we observed this yesterday, uh, day before yesterday, really? when we considered partition function. Ah. For oscillator, mm -hmm. we can use the same trick. The trick would be to consider supersymmetrization. So in physics, this Kazul duality I think, I think, maybe I'm wrong. Mm -hmm. Response to supersymmetry. It means that you have some system. You add some some other variables in the system such that partition function here is uh, in some sense one. So the product of partition function in the fermionic system and in bosonic system. So basically, when I say lambda star lambda i should not put one here or i should say this i want to be right mm -hmm. and maybe there is a dual so okay you 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 may correct me so uh maybe there is a dual here don't is there a dual here or not what do uh, you so it depends on the context. So, okay. so I, I am not sure. I am not sure. It, since it's a side remark, I will put it like this. Okay. It's not quite clear so, what 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 do you actually mean by causal duality. So I mean, it's a, originally it's, it's a statement about quadratic algebras, and the, you you do have two quadratic algebras here, but. Uh, here you, you're putting both sides of the duality on one side. Uh, yes. So uh, uh, so I think I think that what I'm saying is kind of reformulation. You see. Here uh, here I want to say that if you consider such system, you have supersymmetry, and there are four proper partition functions equals to one. Mm -hmm. But this partition function is a product of, uh, say, bosonic partition function and fermionic partition function. In bosonic partition function, you have many things. In fermionic, you have basically very few things. Here we have 
numerator. Here we have denominator. The fact that the product equal to one is this. So it's not that it should not be that hard to make so called sum over instantons because here you have to sum over this space. And you call it degree. Here we have to sum over this fermionic space. And th this is finally dimensional and much more tractable. <coughs> okay, but so. Uh, so you refer to the computation of harmonic oscillator, which is just the, just the bosonic part. Yes. But, the computation uh, of the bosonic oscillator is this. If we consider a fermionic oscillator, mm -hmm. it is this. Mm -hmm. We have just. So for the case when V is just C, so here we have generating function, okay? <laughs> no, so, we, so it is generating function for all elements of the space. Mm -hmm. And uh, or generating function for polynomials. So so I think I, I think there should be something like n factorials. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe C2. No, 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 just uh oh. just C2. So, right. So I guess uh, it's sort of very, very, uh, how to say it, imprecise formulas. Uh, but I guess if, if you're thinking of C, C n as actually symmetric power, then, then it comes with the, the algebra of a, a action of a symmetric algebra. And that, that corresponds, I mean, there's some categorification going in, in one, like between the formula with Q and the formula with with oh, so, yes, so since it's symmetric algebra it's, uh, it's a yes problem. so symmetric algebra corresponds to yeah exactly um, action of SN so here, here I said S okay so this is imprecise but idea is that uh, you can form you can form uh, so in physical terms in physics mm -hmm. you can set a super symmetric oscillator mm -hmm. And then you study its partition function. And uh, it is one. However, it's a product of bosonic and fermionic power. Mm -hmm. In bosonic power, you sum over all. Powers of Z. So you sum many terms, infinitely many terms. And uh, it is convergent, uh, strictly speaking, only so you put a generating parameter that has to be lower than uh, one. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it's ill defined. Here we have a fermionic part. Mm -hmm. Fermionic part is simple. You have just two levels. Mm -hmm. It's a fermionic oscillator, it has mm -hmm. two levels. Can I ask uh, a few stupid questions? Yes. So is your partition function is a Poincare polynomial of that algebra? Yes. Uh, then when you consider that fermionic part, it seems like you should get one minus Q, right? Exactly. Then where so comes- Fermionic is one minus Q. Bosonic is this. You move so, uh, Yes, yes, it is one. So my first question is, how do you get minus sign on the left hand side? Ah, it is because it's a super trace. Ah, super trace. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, so oh. there are two levels. They they definitely differ by uh, by uh, fermionic number. That's why ah. minus here. it's important. So the the shift, uh, the the one shift on v one gives you a minus sign, right? Yes, exactly. Uh, and uh, this would be uh, a more stupid question. So it, the product is definitely one, and it's, it seems like 
being one has a physical meaning. Like, yes. Yes. I don't know the word. But... Index. index of. Of super. Of oh. index of. It's super, super symmetric oscillator. Oscillator. So, what is the mathematical counterpart of that object? Ma mathematical counterpart of this object is this. Uh, I mean, taking homologies and its rank is one or. What? Yes. Ah, so of, of this index, yes, yes. of course, uh, uh, it's a homology of operator Q. And Q is the drum differential. Yes, Q, uh, ah. Q, Q is the Q, no, Q is not the drum differential. You see, it's not the drum differential. It's differential like this. It's a so-called Witten's differential. So you mean, is there a potential or? Of course. Mm, ah, okay. Sorry, dx squared. So Laplacian, okay, Hamiltonian, sorry. Unfortunately, ah, ah, Hamiltonian, Hamiltonian are traditionally written with the same letter. So mm -hmm. I'll just call it Ham in order to. Mm -hmm. Oh, so there is an x square. Okay. Yes. That x is a linear coordinates on the space phi. Yes. Yes. So, oh, okay. so, so the space is. So we have differential forms on R. Ah. Okay. I see. Uh, thank you. This is a system that uh, physicists dis discovered uh, right after they studied supersymmetry. They discovered so they actually they well, the way they started they missed this case because it's interesting only if the space on which differential are acting uh, is non-trivial like sphere or CPN or something okay but they easily found potential that they like. So then what is the causal duality, the role of the causal duality in this picture? So the role, the role of, so, so here it's an example of causal duality. However, I predict, so may I predict something? I predict that when we are summing all, all over degrees, we have something that looks complicated. And then we are lucky to see geometrical progression. So, however, this thing is simple. So it says if your system comes from somehow symmetry, you a tensor product between and, two and two if two they products. and if they uh, kind of decouple, you can replace something. I would say complicated by something. Much more simple. So it, it is a very unusual thing for them to decouple, right? Yes. So if they do not decouple, you may hopefully get some uh, consequences. So this is the simplest case. Mm -hmm. You see, uh, when you look here on this space of morphisms, you may be surprised. How can you ever? Sum over all uh, symmetric powers, etc. Okay, mm -hmm. this seems complicated. You may do it like this together with analytical continuation in the generating parameter. Okay, mm -hmm. so at the moment, I see it as a trick. Okay. But I have a feeling that some version of this trick may be useful in writing down uh, interesting formulas here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so maybe is there a 
a, a little bit more complicated examples other than symmetric alternating. I, algebra. so. Of course, see, they, are, they are Kosudio, I agree, but it's for me, it's a little bit too simple. Too simple. Yes, I know it. I know it. So I, I, I don't, so I am, I am interested in generalization, but I don't, okay. you see, you see, somehow I realized uh, um, Okay, let me tell you. Here we have this. So you, you, you ask a fair question. I know even more interesting formula. Okay? And this interesting formula is that theta function of Q equals to, so it's called the. Mm -hmm. product y one minus q to the n. So I'm, I'm writing approximate formula. Maybe there is a plus here. I don't quite remember. So this is actually theta constant. And let me put here this symbol, meaning that uh, there could be plus signs here. I don't quite remember. Product for m from one to infinity. So this, so this is called so-called bosonization on the torque. Somehow the meaning is that if you take this, so it's, uh, I forgot, uh, it's the Dekind identity or? I think it's Jacobi. Jacobi identity, okay. So if you take this, you see an interesting generalization of this phenomenon. And so this is, this then, is kind of simple. Uh, so uh, here we have a very huge partition function. So actually it's partition function of something like a loops. And uh, here you have a fermionic function. Also, and what, and what would be your v, your you know generalized symmetric algebras and alternating algebras in this case? Uh -huh. So somehow, I think we know we know it. It is a two-dimensional free conformal field theory. Mm -hmm. That's of course a relative of the oscillator. So on the bosonic part, it's it is what it's well the Rasora somehow. Or... So this is this is the theory. Mm -hmm. This is definitely a supersymmetric. Oh, it's not, it's not here, sorry, it's Heisenberg. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a supersymmetric 2D theory. Now, it is, it, it contains infinitely many oscillators. So, sorry. So, well, let me check. Uh, I need to check. Uh, 
everything about fermions. Okay. So maybe not this theory, but square root of this theory. It's basically the same. So, uh, so this is a supersymmetric two-dimensional theory on the torus. Consider it on two-dimensional torus. This simple case was on S1. And here, and here is a torus, so you have loops. And you have this. Mm -hmm. So you should you should think about appearance of theta function of theta constant. So so there are some and appearance of n minus one half here. So the, so there are some tricky things. But the idea how to prove it. In some version, it's like this. Um, so, theta. I mean, the yeah, the numerator and denominator. They have a different. On the left side, they have different interpretations. So, denominator is descendants, and numerator is primary fields. On the left side. On no. The left side. No. So here, here there are states in uh, terms of fermions. No, no, no. I, I was talking about bosonic side. Uh. Ah. In, in bosonic sites, uh, definitely there are not primaries, uh, so it comes from the oscillators. No, so theta of Q should be the list of corresponding to the list of vertex operators and denominator to descendants, right? Mm, you may also uh, yes, but in in chiral algebra. Mm -hmm. So so this is less trivial. So would I take different spins of fermions? I would get. Uh, no theta, I will get just uh, re repetition of something that I, I knew previously. So here it's important that these things got spins like one half. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so but, but, but still this, but this is still a, a super symmetric theory and it's, mm -hmm. it's important. It, it, it again decouples into bosonic into bosons and fermions. Mm -hmm. So, so let me recap a little bit. So, uh, Pavel just mentioned that the left hand side is a Poincare polynomial for a Heisenberg vertex operator yes, algebra. Exactly. Is that right? Yes. And the uh, numerator. Oh, oh, no, not on Heisenberg. Several Heisenberg uh, corresponding uh, several. weights that are oh. quadratic. I see. I see. So that there is a zero mode in Heisenberg algebra. It's and a then, representation of U1. And then the right hand side should be uh, the vertex operator algebra associated so this with is Heisenberg. Heisenberg. Here we have Heisenberg. Here you have uh, uh, Kasmudi abelian. I thought oh. abelian Kasmudi is Heisenberg. No, but, but by Heisenberg, I mean Heisenberg in the sense of conformal field theory, which is already a, a loop. Yeah, that's what I have in mind. So, yeah. so, 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 this, so this is exactly a billion cuts moody. Sure, OK. okay. So I mean, Heisenberg, Pasha, Heisenberg is PX. No, OK, that's a terminological thing. In, in, the, in the conformal field theory textbooks, they call Heisenberg this thing where you have different modes. So, but still, mm -hmm. still actually, it is several modules of abelian you are. Mm -hmm. So there are, there, there could be many of them. However, you pick up very particular one mm -hmm. because the uh, quantum polynomial for abelian you want is just this. You need to multiply by uh, weights. Here, there is a very fixed set of weights. Actually, it means that you consider the so-called partition function on the torus of very particular radius, like one half or one. Mm. So I, I don't, I, I never remember this normalization. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. Then the right hand side corresponds to the Heisenberg associated to the Clifford module. And, and, and this corresponds to fermionic Heisenberg or we should call it Clifford. 
Because for me, only Heisenberg, yes, to Clifford, the algebra, yes. So in a sense, that equality can be viewed as uh, some sort of uh, boson fermion in fermion correspondence. Yes, yes, but uh, but uh, but I would like to interpret it as a version of so-called or something like Kazuo duality, saying that if you put it here, you have something like supersymmetric system and only highest weights. Contribute. Okay, thank you. That is uh, a much diff <laughs> much more difficult examples. <laughs> yes, but, but, uh, but actually, I think that there should be more interesting examples. Mm -hmm. But it's essentially it's again a free theory, right? So that's why they decouple. Yes, yes. So uh, so let me tell you, I never thought about general causal duality related uh, to so interpreted this way mm -hmm. I, I started to think about it quite recently mm -hmm. and then one one final stupid question so in this this quantum mechanics case uh, the the governing model was called the supersymmetric oscillator right mm -hmm. and yeah. in this two-dimensional case what What's the name it, of it, that it, model? It, it is called the uh, supersymmetric sigma model, right? Yeah, yes, it's called two comma two supersymmetric Gaussian model. Gaussian model, okay. Oh. Supersymmetric. Okay, thank you. And uh, and basically, you see some words now words. Unfortunately, I don't know how to phrase it mathematically. Basically, I think that if you perturb something here, then perturbation on the level of bosons could be made more simple in terms of fermions. So I, I actually don't know how to treat it, but, uh, but once again, since everything here seems to be inside uh, homological category, so how should I call it? Homological category. So it is. So it seems to be a. I would. I would like to say something like full subcategory of homological category. Mm -hmm. At least. At least I hope so. I also want to make some remark. Here, and the remark here is that if I am thinking about Riemann surface on the left. Of course, I have a differential uh, that embeds this Riemann surface uh, inside the, say, projective space with some equations. However, actual Riemann surface corresponds uh, to very particular choice of differential. And uh, this particular choice of differential Looks like looks like something like homotopy, if you wish, and uh, and integration over the moduli of Riemann surface seems to be like seems to look like integral over uh, homotopies, and it's it will be quite interesting to work it out. Sorry, so, I, I didn't understand this comment. Why why the causal differential looks like a homotopy? Because, okay, okay, I am answering questions. Suppose you have a space V, mm -hmm. and uh, you want uh, to write down the equation F equals to zero here. Mm -hmm. So F should be homogeneous. Mm -hmm. And you would like to impose this equation and then divide by C star. Mm -hmm. So division by C star is what we are actually doing all the time. Mm -hmm. 
It's inside. Okay. So you do the following. You add here uh, W. Mm -hmm. Shift it by one. Okay. Sure. So so this is the space of equations. Mm -hmm. Now, now what you are studying is suppose you are studying the RAM complex here. Mm -hmm. So when I say D, it means that, uh, of course, I mean PTV. And here, I, okay, I have double notation. PT, W, shifted by one. So I have differential here. I have differential here. I call it dv. I call this dw. Okay. Now I want to say that uh, what I call the surface is. Or the RAM algebra of surface I claim that this is the RAM algebra, that this is dv plus dw algebra of this. I will call it PT super. Now, you may say that you, that's not clear how this uh, comes out. Because what you would like to get is a Kazul differential, right? Yes. And here you do not see Kazul differential. Instead, you have D over DW. So now small W would be coordinate here. Mm -hmm. And here we have DW. So this is even. You want to get here Kazul. Instead, you have this. Mm -hmm. So, what you can do? You can write down something that makes this DW F. So, actually, you are writing, so let me call this D. You apply this D to what? Let me see. To this. And here is some strange epsilon. But wait a moment. You will get something, and then you get e to the dwf plus. I, I think I got it wrong. Not this, but 
some scalar pairs with D W. Yeah, so this formula looks like like Matei Quillen formula. Exactly. You see, I'm not uh, I'm not claiming that I'm inventor. Mm -hmm. Now integrating out the W, you see that the W is F over epsilon. So I know this way to understand it. So, so actually not only you have Kazul, but Kazul itself comes out of the RAM. Now observe that this is homotopy. You are changing integral, you want to take an integral by this totally exact guy. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, such trick was used by Givental in 90s when he studied the quantum cohomology of Calabria manifold. That was embedded in the, into CP5. So in this way, he studied quintics. I don't know who was the first one who discovered the streak. People refer to to supersymmetry again. So this is mathematics, okay? No, no but uh, actually I, I was lost in, in, in a logic here. So uh, no, it's, it's nice to see that the data of a surface itself, it was not present and we just injected it through this homotopy, but what, what are we actually doing? So are we considering the integral of some form on the surface or what, what, is, what is this calculation about? I don't understand uh, it. Yes, yes. I understand the formula, but I don't understand the context. So we want to understand, we want to understand the, what could be the meaning of uh, this, of this uh, uh, super algebra. So this is differential graded algebra. Yeah, so far it has absolutely no data of the surface in it. Yes. Mm -hmm. And we are trying to understand the... Uh, so, uh, so when, you, when we have this algebra, mm -hmm. in some sense it has a lot of numerator, it has numerator and denominator, okay? Mm -hmm. And then we wish to simplify, in some sense, to cancel something from numerator and denominator. So, mm -hmm. so we know that uh, odd variables somehow correspond to denominator, uh, even to numerator. Mm -hmm. So we want to simplify. Mm -hmm. So picking F, we can simplify. So it is homotopy. But this uh, sort of calculation with integrals, so what are we integrating? I mean, they are, you wrote down some piece of a computation of an integral, but... Yes. What, what is the full thing? So you didn't write the full thing. So the full thing is, suppose, uh, suppose we are studying uh, homology algebra. Mm -hmm. And we are studying the integration of the product of cohomology over the fundamental cycle. Mm -hmm. So we can, uh, so inside 
this computation, we can use this trick. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so this, so I know this trick, and, and this trick is, uh, I think, this is uh, real, real story. I think it has a complex story. And if you have a complex story, you are getting differential not like this, but something like d bar plus plus something like f. I, I don't quite remember. You know, there was a man called Edward Witten. And uh, Edward Witten uh, emphasized So now it will be a bit of physics, okay? But then I'll translate this physics into mathematics, okay? Because people refer to physics. However, you see, there is there is piece of physics that could be translated to mathematics. And there is also piece of physics that could not be translated into mathematics, hopefully yet. Mm -hmm. So, in the process of development, uh, people uh, always can translate what people call physics into mathematics, okay? So, Edward Witten said, consider a theory with superpotential. So it is physics. So that's how they that's how they call it. W equals P times F. the right hand side of Susie algebra is DW in particular. There is a fermion. that goes to dw over dp that is f of z so now we easily see in this fermion kazul something and of course edward witten says that uh, to make sense, we need to have degree of f plus degree of p equal to zero. So we should have neutral superpotential so we can divide by c star. So that's what people say in physics. Now, you may ask, where is my construction? I'll tell you. My construction is equivalent to this. Because when people write this, it's interesting. It is only a 
on shell. What do I mean by this? People say, we have so-called superfield X. And we write D for theta, Keller something of X, X bar plus D to theta of W of X plus complex conjugate. So this is very well known formula. And uh, you see when I write it this way, I basically don't care about space dependence, ddx, okay? So I may pretend that I am a mathematician, so I'll write it down and later I would say that nothing depends on X. So people created, so that's how people in physics created it. They studied it in D equals four. They studied it in D equals two. In D equals four, they call it N equals two signal model. In D equals two, they call it, I think two comma two signal model. But I'd like to be a mathematician. I'd like to treat it in D equals zero, okay? So in this case, I'll just write down uh, some uh, purely finite dimensional construction. So actually it's interesting that physicists invoked this space in order to think about supersymmetry, but later on you can forget about this space and look just at uh, superconstruction in finite dimensional mathematics. But when people like Edward Witten and others think about superpotential, etc., they think about it in some quantum field theory. So what people would get out of this? There is a super field X. Okay, I put here hats. So super field X is X plus fermion plus F. So here F is not a function, I'm sorry. Uh, this F is because of function. And this is called F term. I'll put it F term in order not to mix it with the, with the function, okay? Okay, I'll, no, sorry, it's like theta squared. So there are some indices here, it doesn't matter. So then I plug it here. I need to take D for theta integral. D for theta contains interesting terms with space-time derivatives. However, the term that I'm interested in is this one, because I'm not interested in space-time derivatives. So you may ask how space-time derivatives are here. It's because here psi is not a function and x, not a function of x. It's function of x plus theta theta bar. So when I try to, to extract these thetas, I take this I take these derivatives of the field. But I'm not interested in derivatives at the moment. Okay? So I ignore these terms with derivatives. So here I have derivative term. 
plus d d bar k f of bar. Okay? Plus. Now let me come here. In this case, uh, there are no space time derivatives, and I get W prime F plus W two primes two psi. Now, when I look at the transformation law, I know that Q corresponds to something like V over D theta. There are also space-time derivatives, but I ignore them. So in some sense, F is uh, so so one of the f is q of psi. That's why I see that it is f term. F term. Uh, uh, that is exact. So when I integrate this f and f bar out, here I have exactly the quadratic integral that I wrote to you just above. I will get F term that is uh, when I am so F term is W prime one over DD bar K. Actually, it's F bar term. So I see exactly the same construction, exactly the same. I just want to know that W prime is uh, what I'd like to have as F function. So I actually have this casual differential in the game. However, it's interesting that exact coefficient here depends on this auxiliary metric. The result is independent on the choice of this metric whenever this metric is not degenerate. So this is what people do in so-called cold physics. Before I told you what I will get from Matai Equila that are that are not physicists, okay, at all. So that's how Edward Witten and company guessed this, they call it localization to the zero of equation. I also explained you how uh, it could come out in Matai Quillen. And uh, since Givental used this 
in 93 or 94, approximately at the same time when Witten wrote this fancy super potential, Remember, here is P. Super potential was P times F. I don't know if Givintali invented it by himself or he borrowed this idea from Edward Witten. Of course, he could invent it for him from himself. Because it's very natural in terms of uh, super geometry. And you know that super geometry is something where uh, Russians are masters. <laughs> After Berezin, basically. And later on, there is a person whom Dong may know. It's called Bumsik Kim, I think, who was collaborator of Givental and who implemented this a lot. So first he worked with Givental, then he worked alone. Actually, he's my mentor, so I. Ah, <laughs> okay. So, so, so that's why. Uh, so that's why. Uh, very good. At least, uh, you see, at least the wall turns out to be round. Okay, so. So I don't know. So you may ask him, uh, uh, did uh, Edward Witten uh, influence Vintal or it was independent? So you can guess it. Uh, so the idea is that you can guess it. Uh, from the first principles. Or you can uh, borrow idea from Witten. Now, Pasha, let me tell you something. Mm -hmm. So this, this is homotopy in the same sense as uh, the space of zero zeros of the vector field uh, is the homotopy uh, is the result of homotopy applied uh, to the Euler complex. Okay? So, we, so you, you can write down formula for Euler number yes, if you yes. have uh, a theory that is the Ramp theory on the PT, I think PT of target. Mm -hmm. Maybe T star. So, uh, so you are looking for the zero sections of the vector field. For zeros of a vector field. Yes, zero. Yes, yes. For zeros of the vector field. Yes. Yeah. So, in, so you can write the same thing. And vector field that you pick pick out is kind of a representative. Mm -hmm. Or, or kind of homotopy and you can contract using basically the same mechanism. Or you can ignore vector field and, uh, and use uh, something else like no, I, understand, I understand that, that the vector field is a part of the data of, of the homotopy, so to speak, which you put in the matter equivalent formula, which you can then deform to the situation when the vector field is zero. Yes, yes, yes. yes. So, so you can take uh, so you can take vector field mm -hmm. to contract things, or you can take zero vector field, but uh, have yeah. something. I think that, you need that, connection, connection. Yes, metric. yes, yes. yes. Uh, it's, uh, actually, you're taking a metric or something like that. Yeah, well, both. So you need a, let me see. Well, you need connection somewhere also. Connection should be compatible with metric. So uh, yes. So as far as I understand, it, it should come out uh, from the metric, but uh, mm -hmm. but I would not insist. I just don't want to insist. So um, so actually, there are two terms 
one term is is function. Now it's function. I call it pump times something plus what I call dw w. You apply d here. So it, it uses both the metric and the connection. This sec, think, sec, second term, second term. Uh, I think that when you apply it properly, you will get, uh, so he, here we put something like, well, I don't remember exact formulas, but uh, it's possible to, so you, you need to write this thing coherently. Mm -hmm. So I think here we have something like, okay, I'm not, Sure, but if you do it like this, oh, that's right, that's right, yeah. You can then say, let us consider f function equal to zero. Mm -hmm. Okay, so no, you, you are not localizing anywhere. You apply it here. You get some somehow here, okay. some somewhere here. You should get a curvature. I don't remember details, and then mm -hmm. you integrate the the integral of the curvature over the manifold. That's or right. you can. You can put something here. Mm -hmm. So basically, yeah. it's, it's the same. So the difference here is that that uh, here, so here it had degree d, and this also had degree minus d. So when you are doing uh, Euler, I think. You 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 put here degree one. Yes. I think. Let's see. Let's see. Um, no, you 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 said f to degree zero. I guess. Well, that's your section. So so basically, my idea is that you have v and w. So this is a space. So it's called field. In physical terms, in physics, and this is called equation. Mm -hmm. So, in the vector, uh, uh, in the vector, uh, uh, in the Euler case, you have the well, same it, yes. number of equations as the number of the fields. So here we also have v, but I think it's v dual. Uh, okay. So you have the same amount of uh, <coughs> of equations <coughs> as amount of the fields. Sure. So and here you have in this degree. So if I'm not mistaken, it's it's what you study. Well, you do it so that the homotopy should be in degree minus one as usual. Mm -hmm. So. So, uh, so here in so-called Witten uh, given tally, I don't know who else case, and uh, and it was definitely in the first given tally's uh, paper without Bimsek, without Bimsek, as far as I understand. If I'm uh, wrong, please correct me. Um, This space is only one dimensional, but has higher degree. But degree is just uh, C star degree, so it's easy. Okay. So that's that's also the piece of the story. Mm -hmm. So now. Now here I have equation. So after we described all this, and I'm willing to study Riemann surfaces that are mapped somewhere. So it will be called the higher genus something. 
they would dep depend on the complex structure. And complex structure is exactly the choice of homotopy in this super uh, manifold. And it will be interesting to see why sometimes I have to integrate over this homotopy. So, so maybe when I'm writing things like this, I'm a bit too naive. Maybe there are also higher structures hidden somewhere here. You know, it's, it's always a problem. When you are writing a definition, you should definitely think that you are writing uh, the full space and not just the H naught, okay? So, uh, So maybe, maybe let me let me make a conjecture, okay? Maybe I should include here diffeomorphisms somehow. I should see them here in the case if I, if I have a renal surface. So this should uh, correspond to G1 extended or somehow, I don't know, the, the quotient with respect to something. I, I don't know, you see here, how to understand moduli of surfaces in this picture, but still, I still think that this point of view on uh, so-called uh, physics is kind of instructive. So this description uh, somehow uniformly describes uh, different quantum field, th field theories in different uh, dimensions. So this integration over idea of integrating over the space of homotopies of special special type is uh, what we have seen in in our work with you and Donald, right? Essentially, because choosing a gauge fixing is well is a homotopy of special type depending on I don't know a complex structure. Yes. And then yes. you would like to integrate over them. Yes. So. Uh, so. This is still an important question mm -hmm. in uh, mathematical understanding of what quantum field theory is and what are the construction. Mm -hmm. And it is the question uh, in homological algebra. So it's, it's a question in homological algebra. Suppose you have homotopy, it's okay. But what if you have a set of homotopy? Let me put this question back to homological algebra. I'd really like to understand structures and quantum field theories not coming from my mind, but uh, inherited from uh, embedding uh, of uh, physics inside homological algebra. And this is an issue that uh, there are many homotopies. And uh, it is sometimes, so we know that some results are independent on homotopy. Mm -hmm. But the fact that result is independent on homotopy uh, is just H0 on the space of homotopies. Mm -hmm. At the same time, the space of homotopies uh, could have non-trivial cycles. Yes. So, uh, so we can study dependence on homotopy. So we can study dependence on homotopies on the world, on so-called world sheet and on so-called target space. By the way, when I view it uh, in the category of uh, maps between manifolds, these things look 
completely different. Okay. Nothing, uh, you see, nothing similar, you see, between homotopy of the world sheet, homotopy of the target. Okay. However, if you try to, to watch it in this perspective, so, so this, what I called it, is a so-called A module. Once again, it's an A module mm -hmm. stuff. Yes. So, uh, if you look at it in this perspective, it's not, uh, it should not be that strange. The structures on the world sheet and on the target are similar. We are integrating over homotopies on the world sheet. Why we are not integrating over homotopies on the, on the target? On what, what would it mean? So, it could mean different questions. So for homotopy, you need to distinguish between uh, IR and the UV. So there's two complex. Uh... In some sense, you see, when I say UV, I mean before homotopy. So homotopy is a way to contract. But now there are several ways yes. to contract. So, so and the simple uh, examples that we looked at, uh, like simple examples of the A model, uh, there was no D on the target here. Uh, it was, I don't know, just something like CPN. The, the, uh, Pasha, as you know, there, there was D on the target. So well, we didn't try to map <laughs> into something complicated that, that's where we need to impose equations. Um, You see, when you when you have holo when you have maps, you have uh, canonically morphism of uh, the RAM algebras. Sure. So, when you treat it as maps, uh, you actually have the natural continuation to the inverse map of uh, DG algebra. No, I mean that there's no target Kazul. So when we, yes. Yes. So yes, it's true. So when we studied the CPM, there was no target Kazoo. However, mm -hmm. uh, we could play the game of CPN inside CPN plus one, and that mm -hmm. would be target Kazoo. So mm -hmm. yeah. So once again, it's interesting that there are several models. Mm -hmm. And uh, there, so so there are several things that bother me. In particular, so. But it's not terribly convincing that we should uh, really look at integration over uh, homotopies on the target because still, I mean, you're, you're calling it a category, but you didn't quite convince that there is the composition of morphisms. I, uh, let me, one second, let me, I, I'll be right back. I need to fill in, mm -hmm. uh, ah, I can do it right here. Yes. And this is, uh, so while formally you can mm -hmm. make composition of morphisms, okay? Mm -hmm. You would like to see simplest example mm -hmm. where we do have it, mm -hmm. okay? So the example that I know where we do have it, you see, mm -hmm. so it comes, so for me, it comes where you study higher holomorphic theory. And uh, maybe it's a reason why people somehow missed it. Mm -hmm. So once again, I know that the map of curves 
into x. Okay, let me call it x to c, two complex dimension. Mm -hmm. So this actually, so I can map this here. I can map this to target. Mm -hmm. So in some in so in some sense, I have kind of composition. But sort of ending with a very particular. Thing. At the moment, yes. At the moment, mm -hmm. the very particular target. So. Mm -hmm. uh, so when I put forward this uh, idea of gauged linear signal model, mm -hmm. cat, it is a conjecture. So I actually like, I like, I need, I want to see more examples mm -hmm. that are that are confirming that one has to study this uh, this thing as a category. Mm -hmm. In particular, when I had x1c, there are not, uh, I don't have a lot of choice. Mm -hmm. Not so many Toric world sheet. Okay. Mm -hmm. However, if I have X two C somewhere, mm -hmm. I have a lot of toric world sheets. So these toric world sheets themselves mm -hmm. may be or should be constructed as uh, as homotopical uh, as sorry as uh, as quotient as as symplectic quotient okay mm -hmm. so actually x to c itself is this one so I actually consider map so so x to c itself is point to vg. So I have an arrow this way. So what do I mean? You see, I have to think. What do I mean uh, when I say that the world sheet? is uh, there's a source or world sheet historic. Mm -hmm. Of course I mean maps of points to V over G. Mm -hmm. And then I'd like to see the maps of this to some V1, to some V2 over G2. Mm -hmm. So somehow I see these maps. And I see them once again. I insist. It's an there is an interesting contravariant factor that I don't know how to explain. Mm -hmm. Because there are not so many contravariant factors in the game. So the only contravariant factor is Kazul duality. once again. But it looks strange for me. So maps of X to target is a maps of something to X. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's interesting. Mm So after I lifted six 
to homological algebra, I have no other choice than causal duality. There is no there is no other natural uh, uh, functors. So if so if I do uh, symmetric uh, algebras inside the uh, homological algebra, the only potential duality is causal duality. So, but at the moment I don't know how to implement it here. It's a conjecture, it's a guess. It's not even a conjecture, it's a guess. I just like to point your attention to this thing. Okay, so so reference uh, to other names. So people used to call this thing uh, quasi maps. So that's why you may try to see different formulas in the literature. For example, recently there are works of uh, Banelli, Tanzini, and somebody and someone else. that I appreciate a lot. And th th there's one more collaborator, but I know this too. <clears throat> From Tor Vergata, Rome. They study Donaldson invariance on <coughs> toric manifolds. And since we understand that Donaldson invariance correspond to a map to point over G, we, we already have this toric to point over G. At the same time, toric is of course V over C star to the power M. So people who study this. Already. And uh, they do it like a year ago, finding interesting formulas. So there is a twist in the attitude to Donaldson invariance. Mm -hmm. People mistakenly consider them a tool to classify for the smooth four dimensional variables, mm -hmm. uh, varieties, sorry. However, they turn out to be interesting on their own. Let me give you a mathematical analogy. Suppose uh, you want to understand topology of the Riemann surfaces considered as a two-dimensional manifold with a metric, okay? Just imagine this game. Immediately, you see that uh, two-dimensional manifolds with a metric admit complex structure. And since they admit complex structure, 
you may calculate, I don't know, genus. And you'll be happy, yes? You calculated the uh, topology. Great. But <laughs> it's not the only thing that you have to study after you invent such a tool. Well, there is a lot to study in driven services, not just topology. Similar case happened with uh, Donaldson invariants. Yes, they are defined uh, on general uh, four-dimensional manifold. However, uh, if you restrict to something more interesting than general four-dimensional manifold, maybe not interesting, interesting in another way, you will get a lot of interesting formulas and relations, etc. Now, after this exposition, let me ask the following question. So suppose we have linear gauge sigma model cat. Suppose we, we have it. So we have an interesting thing. We have the space of morphisms. But what to do with this space? We need, so we cannot work with this space. We need, uh, so these spaces are like instantons in Donaldson theory. Remember what Donaldson did. He constructed differential forms. He studied topology on this space. So similarly, that's what we have to do. So first, one can study equivariant problems. You can generalize it to so-called K theory. So these spaces, <clears throat> Are roughly speaking something like projective spaces. So you may uh, uh, so you may uh, have a symplectic structure on it, quantize it, and compute the number of sections. So it's called K, K theory approach. And the covariant volume comes out of this. But you, what we may try to find out some other observables on this space. So it will be interesting to put evaluation observable. Or evaluation like observables. And consider these observables as equations on I don't know how to call it I prefer to call it more space because uh, sometimes it's instantons sometimes it's quasi maps sometimes it's something else so morphism okay mm. No, I don't understand. How 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 are relation observables equations on the morphisms? How how does it, how is it in the case of usual I don't know holomorphic maps from? Yes, I don't know. and let me and that's what I'm trying to explain. Mm -hmm. Okay, and uh, let me tell you why I like it. Okay, I have some personal reason to like it. Okay. Oh, oh, it's like an enumerative problem, so like... No, 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 not, not, not because I, you see, I have very personal reason to like it. Mm -hmm. It's because I, with money, 
studied the following space. Riemann surface, white mm -hmm. points, black points. Mm -hmm. So black points can collide. White points never collide. And also white points and black points never collide. Mm -hmm. So when uh, I was Manning studied these spaces, It was a bit abstract, okay? Mm -hmm. But now I know that uh, when we have a maps from CP1 to Doric, I know that these things are naturally decorated, namely black points. are decorated by compactification divisors. So Doric is uh, C star to the N with compactification divisor. White points are decorated by evaluation observables. And in this case, you have a differential form on the modular space. So you put some white points, some set of white points, uh, where you put the relation observables, and you have this quasi maps. Mm -hmm. However, so why, so why I can do it? Because uh, what I'm afraid of, if uh, several divisors come together, then I do not have evaluation at that point. Mm -hmm. like, like when I go to CP1, the pre-image of zero and pre-image of infinity mm -hmm. come together. However, we constructed compactification of this space in such a way that black points never hit white points. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's interesting. Uh, it's kind of relative uh, data. So <clears throat> naively, one may think that one has to consider the compactification of the space of maps in order to have evaluation at the marked point. Mm -hmm. However, uh, however, I, however, it's possible to study quasi maps. Mm -hmm. So quasi maps do not have values somewhere. But if you keep it away from the points where you are doing evaluation, it's okay. Mm -hmm. So this, uh, so this set, and this is exactly the set that we studied, is exactly what is needed to study quasi. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so we published it in two thousand. So only <laughs> at the same time we with Nikita Nikrasov was thinking about the freckles. So freckles is the place of collision of. Uh, of several uh, pre-images of divisors where you don't have evaluation. And at that time, it was also around 2000. I just uh, failed to meet these two things together in my mind. Mm -hmm. 
But now I see that it's exactly what is needed. So it is so just black points is a description of the space of quasi maps. So if I add white points, I can stabilize SL2C. and study different interesting problems with black points and white points running around. So it's kind of universal. So, uh, so this so-called LM moduli spaces seems to be a universal uh, holomorphic maps to Tori varieties. Mm -hmm. Now, I think that uh, I have not did it yet, but I am somehow sure for some reason, that if I will replace storage here to something similar, to some quotients by other complex groups, so hopefully for Grassmannians, I will also get some kind of coloring here, although I have not done it yet. So that's it. Uh, that's it is. So this theory of LM spaces seems to be a universal theory of uh, maps uh, to hopefully to gauge linear sigma model. Universal theory. Just pick up different colorings and you get different representations. In another interesting thing is that something happens with the space of quasi maps. So quasi maps themselves locally could uh, hit each other. However, since we have this white point, this is kind of by rational transformation on the space of quasi maps. So when they are go going to the white point, we have a blow up, of course. And it's interesting to study the topology of the space of quasi maps. And, and of course, a covariant quotient of this space that is modified from what is naively expected. And this exercise is important in order to promote all this, this theory to X to C case. And that is of course most interesting. So we are studying two dimensional theory in this way and in that way, and in all possible ways in order to come to the two X to C case. Because in X to C case, we do not have a Grom of Wheaton theory. But what we do have, we have a Nikrasov partition function that is closely related, or that should be closely related. So idea is to, to get all possible lesson from a complex one dimensional case in order to apply it to two dimensional case. And once again, I hope that relations would be universal. Mm -hmm. So the prizes along this way, the prize would be two complex analog of WD. A lot of applications to emirative geometry, applications to Donaldson invariance, and many other things. By the way, there is also 
three CKs. And this is called the Donaldson Thomas. And people actually study this. Okay. So I so th so that's where I want to go. I wanted to start. I wanted to say more about this, but uh, in any case, my uh, style is to answer all questions. Pasha, right? Mm -hmm. So I wanted to start to speak one hour. I have spoken two hours. So I am a bit tired because you see, I am slowly recovering, okay? So when I'm full, when I'm working full speed, I can talk three hours, Pasha knows, right? So there are many equations in front in this category. So what, uh, so once again, I forgot the title of my talk. <laughs> the title of my talk is of course, towards LGSM category. Mm -hmm. Oh, not LG, GL, gauge linear. All right. Mm -hmm. So while uh, giving talks here, I somehow enlarge the scope of what was, of what I was going to explain. Remember, uh, I was trying to explain. Uh, as a special coordinates in the me in the B model, okay. And uh, but then uh, I said that there was an interesting uh, four-dimensional equation, mm -hmm. and this four-dimensional equation is about something when you divide by so the complex group. It's about the special coordinate on the space of deformation of holomorphic algebraic systems, holomorphic uh, integrable systems, mm -hmm. or algebraic integrable systems. Mm -hmm. But then I started to explain that in order to get this, one has to rethink what we have in complex dimension one again or a think mirror so so that's why we are here and while rethinking it i realized that uh, it's not just analogy everything is completely in the same pattern mm -hmm. And that's why I am uh, sharing it with you. So would I know it from the very beginning? I'll call uh, my course towards GLSM category. But sorry. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's it. All right, thank you. Pasha, was it understandable? More or less, more or less. 
Yeah, I'd say so. Yeah, but also I should not be the uh, the sort of distribute the test because uh, I'm, <laughs> I'm very sleepy. I'm sorry. I'm, I, I know. A, Don't bad, bad time zone. Was it understandable? So the most part was understandable, but I think I'm a bit lost in the sense that um, I have to probably look at the examples we studied before again, um, which is basically the historic uh, variety example. But then I would like to see more examples, I think, to, to fully understand what is, yes, what is yeah. going on. And but, uh, uh, I'm sorry that I invoked some terminology from homological algebra from something derived etc no but, no but that's uh, okay i mean since, since you are supposed to be a physicist yeah some, some something like that <laughs> uh, still i want you you see i still i want to throw that things that people are doing in physics and in mathematics are are actually the same not similar but actually the same no, I understand. I think it's it's very interesting. It's just that I, I think I take more time to to fully understand. I have to just go over it again. I think, I think some some things that uh, well uh, about causal duality, especially. So we never sort of really recalled what what is actually causal duality and. Uh, I mean, on the level uh, of sort of... I would say Kazul like Right. I mean, it's, it sort of exists. I mean, the, the original one for, was for quadratic algebras, and then it was, you know, Kazul duality for operands. But, um, yeah, so here it was kind of... On the level of intuition, it's clear what, what, what you were so saying. So I, I, I got it on the level of intuition. Mm -hmm. I had to rethink it for myself. There's a more general level. <laughs> but uh, it is interesting that space of polynomials is somehow dual to the very simple space. Mm -hmm. Yes. But only if we include all degrees. Mm -hmm. Yes. I realized it uh, only recently. Mm -hmm. I fully re realized it only recently. Mm -hmm. No, that's a very interesting idea. So before, once again, before we sum up everything, you don't see any duality. It's mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let me ask Dong. Dong, was it understandable? Uh, uh, I don't think I understand fully enough to, you know. So you would have, have any. It would be better to have a, some sort of examples to to do it. But moduli spaces, moduli spaces, fine. I understand. That. Actually, happy to see that one, but this, the relation to this four dimensional theories, I really don't know. But uh, okay, okay, mm -hmm. so everybody said that uh, I have to provide more examples, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. I got it. Okay, but first you, you give philosophy, then you give example, right? Sure, sure. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. Well, um, yeah, um, thank you. Okay. Yeah. See you. Thanks a lot. Thanks okay, a lot. Okay, so see you tomorrow. Thank you. See you tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow. Okay. okay.
See you tomorrow. Bye. Bye.